Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for having uh, this hearing today. And thank you to all the witnesses uh, for being here. You know, Mr. Chairman, every time I go home to my district, I hear about prescription drug uh, cost. Uh, and I don't think I'm alone. I think we, we all hear the stories. Constituents who have to ration their insulin, seniors cutting pills in half, folks skipping doses to make their meds last longer. It's absolutely critical that we use every tool at our disposal to bring down these prices for Americans. As we've heard, one of the key components of this legislation is the ability for Medicare to negotiate drug prices. I want to say that I've seen firsthand how effective it can be when the government uses its leverage on behalf of our constituents. I know this from personal experience because I'm a customer of the VA. Before I started using the VA to buy my cholesterol uh, medicine, I paid out of pocket every month $120 and change. At the VA, I pay $18 a month. That's over $1,300 in savings every year. And that's just for one cholesterol med. $1,300. That's real money. That's more than a month's worth of groceries for a family in my district. That's two or three car payments, a month of child care. That's what happens when the government has leverage in negotiations. I want to start my questions by asking one of the most uh, innovative and expensive um, asking about one of the most innovative and expensive drugs on the market today. Earlier this year, the FDA approved a new gene therapy for children with a rare genetic disorder. This therapy is quite literally a lifesaver. It's also the most expensive drug in the world. It costs $2.2 million per patient. So Dr. Miller, I'd like to ask you, how do we verify that a $2 million drug is priced fairly? Is there any mechanism in Medicare to make sure that new drugs, drugs without competition, are reasonably priced and are not uh, going to be uh, used to gouge patients? So um, the choices you have, but right now there isn't a, a mechanism, the choices you have is you can look at cost-effective analysis, you can look at what other countries pay, or you could look at the cost of what it brought, what it took to bring that drug to market. But of course, that is pretty uh, opaque to anybody. That would require um, information, uh, information we don't have. The issue, I think, and particularly as it relates to the last exchange on the ne negotiation, is the PBMs negotiate, and I'm speaking only for myself, I think that process in Part D, where there are competitors, actually can work well. The problem is, is when a drug like this shows up and there's no other competitor, then the manufacturer um, can, can set the price. And I think the penalty is put in, I, you know, I, I think the penalty is put into this law because the leverage that the PBM has is it will take the drug off a of formulary. It'll say all your revenue is going to disappear if you don't agree to a price. And as I understand H.R. 3, they're trying to say they don't want to take it off the formulary, they want to make it available, and they need some other leverage to bring the person to the table. But either you can look at international prices, cost effectiveness, or the cost of the drug. Those are your three metrics, but they're not available to you thank, now. Thank, thank you. We, we've heard from critics that this particular bill will hamper innovation. Uh, I want to point out that uh, innovation isn't worth much if nobody can afford the product. Uh, but I agree that we should encourage the, uh, and, uh, the development of new medicines and new treatments, and innovation is an important. So, Dr. Miller, um, if this bill were to pass, uh, how would the negotiating drug prices disrupt innovation? All right, so I do, I want to be very clear, and I agree with Benedict and some of the other uh, comments that this is something that needs to be done uh, carefully. I also wouldn't blow past the notion that with lower prices, there will be greater access, and with better coverage, there'll be greater access. So you will get health gains there, and we shouldn't just blow right uh, past that. But on the R&D front, I think the real key here is targeting and clarity. If in the legislation you say these are the criteria for these drugs, 
and, it, and the idea being that they're expensive and no competition, are the drugs that are subject to negotiation, then the industry will understand the lanes that they have to play in and will know what to expect. That will mute some of the effect on, that people are concerned about in R&D. I don't think it's the fact that you pull money out, because I think there is headroom uh, on the revenues that are available to continue to go into R&D. I think uncertainty is the risk, and as long as it's clear in the legislation, you can, uh, you can adjust that. But there are other places where money can go into R&D. People have mentioned marketing. The CBO estimates suggest that e, uh, EU prices will go up, which will generate more revenue for R&D. And then, as I mentioned, you could take savings from the bill and also put that in, into R&D. Thank you.